Welcome to Jiffy's Junk Box, the channel where we talk about anything and everything because we're cresting 30 and still don't know what we want to be when we grow up. Today's episode, we're going to be talking cryptic stuff, specifically mining with the Baikal BKX. What we're we'll doing with this miner is showing you how to update the firmware to get the most out of it. The version 2.2 of the Pi Zero firmware for this miner is going to give you about an 8% boost on all your algorithms without any added power draw. So essentially, we're just making this miner more profitable. Now, the process I want Went through to update the firmware on my miner i had to watch a video in german with no captions and try to gleam what he was doing in that video now i didn't do this for fun this was simply i didn't have any other resources out there at least i couldn't find anything with my google powers if you prefer though i have a full written detailed procedure in the description of this video so you don't have to sit here and listen to my monotone explanation all links will be provided within the description of this video as well so let's go ahead and get started First, you're going to want to start with simply unplugging everything, power it down, disconnect all the power cables and the PSU, remove the Ethernet cable from the unit. We're going to remove the screws securing the access panel opposite of the cooling fan. If yours came fully assembled, unlike mine, you should have four screws, one in each corner. So we're going to go ahead and slowly slide the hashing boards along with the control boards out of the unit. Now the smaller board on top with the Ethernet and the USB port is where the SD card sits. You want to gently remove this, gently, because the pins can be bent. Once removed, go ahead and remove the SD card. Next is all the computer stuff. As for hardware, all you're going to need is an SD card reader. Now the SD card that you're using, hopefully the one that you have in the unit is 8 gigs or more, but if it's not, get one that's 8 gigs. Next, the required software to write the firmware onto the SD card. So you're going to want a specific SD card formatter because the OEM software on your computer, simply right clicking on the drive and clicking format isn't going to be good enough to get all the information off that SD card. For some reason, it could leave partitions and cause an error when you're writing the firmware onto the SD card. Next, we need the software to write the file onto the SD card. Windows 32 Disk Imager will work fine. Lastly, we need the firmware file. And I've gone ahead and provided a direct link to the page that sends you to the Google Drive file just to save you the headache because fumbling through by Cal's website can be a pain. So you're welcome. I made it easy for you. So let's go ahead and get this process started. We're going to start with downloading the firmware file. So go ahead and go to by Cal's page. Click on the blue hyperlink. It's going to take you to a Google Drive. You're going to select the furthest file on the right, right click it, download. Now Google is going to tell you that this file is too big to scan. Just go ahead, accept, continue. And while we're waiting for that firmware update to download, we're going to go ahead and format our SD card. So let's open up the SD card formatter software that we downloaded. The options that are selected when you open up the, the software is just fine. So go ahead and click format on the drive that your SD card is located in. For me, it's drive E. Next, when that's done, go ahead and open up the software that we're going to use to image that firmware onto our SD card. So by now, the firmware should be done downloading. And I would save that to a place that's easy to locate, such as desktop. So now we're going to open up Windows 32 Disk Imager. We're going to select our file to be written, and then we're going to select the drive that our SD card is located on. Once again, mine's on E. And then we're going to click Write. This should take about three to five minutes. Now at the end of this process, your PC may ask you to format this disk again to use it. Simply cancel and ignore this. If you accept this, it's going to clear everything and you're going to have to do this whole process again. And there you have it. You have the updated firmware on this SD card. So go ahead and go plug it back into the unit. Gently line the pins up, push it in, and make sure it's fully seated. Then we're going to go ahead and assemble the unit. All right, our unit is assembled. So we're going to go ahead and plug everything in, the power cables from the PSU, our Ethernet cable. And then lastly, we're going to apply power to the PSU, very last. All right, now that we've given our miner a couple minutes to warm up, we're going to go ahead and access the GUI. I do this by logging onto my router admin page and going under clients. For me, I'm going to see by Cal and then the IP address for that by Cal. So we're going to go ahead and highlight the IP address, right click and click go to. Now logging on to your by Cal, 
everything should be bone stock. So the password should be by cal, lowercase. And there you go. As you can see, we are now hashing at a higher rate, approximately 8% across the board. And we are all set. That's it. We're done. So that's the vid. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and check the channel out if you want. We got a little bit of everything around here. If you wouldn't mind doing any of that normal engagement that people do with YouTube, I'd greatly appreciate it. It really helps us small guys out. All right. Thanks. Have a good day.